Hi and welcome back. I thought it was going to be a quiet weekend until this popped up in my inbox. It's, of course, the Boeing 777X. Commercial passenger aircraft during certification have to be tested to 1.5 or 150% of their overall pressure. Boeing announced that, sadly, their 777X did fail just under the 150% pressurization test. With the blowing out of a cargo door area. But it's been revealed that the damage was more significant. I think this photograph clearly shows that it was slightly more than just the cargo door blowing out. There's obviously some structure around the door which did fail. Of course, it is way above the normal in-service pressurization, but it does need to be certified to the uh, one and a half times over pressurization limit. But 1% under the maximum limit that it uh, needs, it's possible that the FAA will just get Boeing to do something and, doesn't, and they don't have to redo the test. Can you imagine they have to actually pressurize a whole plane and hope it doesn't fail? In this case, it has it's quite a big fix. So for anybody who doesn't understand the pressurization of aircraft, aircraft are thin aluminum skinned. And as they uh, go up in the air, you need to uh, increase the pressure to compensate for the decrease in pressure of altitude. And something that passengers don't really realize is that while you're flying at 30, 35,000 feet, you're actually only pressurized to about eight, which is like standing on top of quite a large mountain. And something which is a bugbear of mine is, as a pilot, 8,000 feet is actually high enough to suffer from what's called epoxia. And you really don't want to drink alcohol. Have you ever noticed, I'm sure you have, that during the cruise part of your flight at altitude, most people fall asleep. That's hypoxia. They don't tell you that. <laughs> They also don't tell you a small percentage of people can be more severely affected and alcohol, certainly those double shots of gins that they might give you on the plane are highly not recommended because alcohol and hypoxia really don't mix. Being British, as you know, I thought if we're going to talk about planes and broken planes and pressurization, I think it is worth looking at the old archive footage of the first jet airliner, the de Havilland Comet, which sadly did break up in the air due to a fatigue crack due to cycles of pressurization. And this was discovered in this amazing water tank. De Havilland and Air Ministry put the whole Comet fuselage in this tank and pressurized it to find out what would fail. And sure enough, they found a failure point at a stress point on the corner of quite a square window or possibly an antenna fixture. The, the, it's slightly controversial, but anyway, it was metal fatigue and there was what's called explosive depressurization. That's where a can of soda and you put a knife in it. It's not good, certainly if you're sitting in the airplane. So I'm sorry, Boeing, yet another problem. Um, some people are saying that uh, they've actually stopped their automated or robot construction process on the triple X, triple seven X, and they've gone back to skilled workers actually building them. That might have been the problem. I don't know, but hopefully you'll get it fixed. It's scheduled to fly next year. And it has one amazing feature, which you probably know, it is so long, which incredible wing, they've had to fold the wingtips, uh, a bit like a fighter aircraft on a aircraft carrier deck. So that will be amazing to see as an airport. So make it strong. Let's not have them blow up. You really don't want this as a problem, Boeing. And uh, good luck because we're watching.
the truth is out there.